This is a very detailed study of uh, the broad set of health outcomes and risk drivers of health patterns in 50 states over nearly a generation from 1990 to uh, 2016. The most uh, intriguing finding to me is that we see very different trajectories for different states in the United States uh, by age group. So in children and adolescents, generally in every state, death rates are getting better. Uh, and in the age groups over 55, we see the same thing. In all 50 states, there's really positive trends, lower death rates from most of the major causes and overall. But in the middle category, from ages 20 to 55, we see completely divergent trends. We see some states, like California or New York, where there's really positive trends, really great progress in reducing death rates. And then we see a large number of states, uh, places like Kentucky or West Virginia or Oklahoma and others, where death rates have actually been going up in those age groups, which creates a very uh, divergent pattern within the United States. So if we dig a little bit deeper into the results that we find in the study, uh, why are things getting worse in, in some states in, in these younger to middle-aged adults? Uh, what we find is that there's adverse trends that pretty much everybody's heard about already from the opioid epidemic. We see death rates going up from a number of other causes as well. In some of those states, we see suicide going up. We see cirrhosis related to alcohol and some hepatitis C going up. We see diabetes increasing, particularly for prevalence, uh, less so for death. The most alarming is the rise of obesity, which is driving up uh, you know, both cardiovascular disease or higher rates than we would have expected uh, in many places where obesity is large, and of course the rise of opioid use uh, as well. Some conditions that don't cause a lot of mortality are big determinants of loss of health, like musculoskeletal disorders, as an example, like mental health uh, disorders, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, uh, as, as uh, the sort of larger factors there. And those turn out to be huge drivers of patterns of health in the United States, and you would miss that if you just focus on death rates. So what makes the global burden of disease work, and, and in this case the U.S. Uh, state burden of disease uh, sort of unique, is the comprehensive approach. We look at uh, individual death certificate data for all the deaths that have occurred in the United States over that period of time. We look at a very wide set of household survey type causes, you know, the things like the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey various types of interview surveys like the National Health Interview Survey and the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance Survey, hospital data from uh, the various systems that uh, different states collect and nationally are collected for hospital discharges. We look at claims data to give us insights into types of conditions that mostly show up in outpatient settings like skin diseases. And we try to bring all those different data sources together to provide a comprehensive view of both disease outcomes and risk factors. We have these adverse trends in some states in ages 20 to 55. And if you go beneath that, we have adverse trends for opioids, for diabetes, for uh, you know, obesity, overweight. So we see a package of things on the horizon that have already started to play out in some states that uh, should make us a little bit concerned that this historic movement towards better health won't necessarily continue forever in the future.